Transit, model number 3-5383A, General Electric Micro Cassette Recorder and Player. Uh, we will go over some of the basic features of the micro cassette as well as some added options to this recorder and player. So, without further ado, here we go. As you just heard, today's uh, video will be about the micro cassette. Um, this is what that was recorded on. This is a Thompson 60 minute micro cassette, so 30 minutes aside. Okay. So, um, the micro cassette was developed by Olympus in 1969 to compete with Philips mini cassette format. Um, the advantages over the Philips mini was it had, I mean pretty much the only thing that it had over that was it was slightly smaller and it was also, it also played back at a constant speed. But if you notice, this is side A. If you understand like cassettes, you know that the take-up reel is on the right side and the supply reel is on the left side. Well, it's the opposite in this. The micro cassette also has two felt pads um, and the capstan hole is in the center of the cassette, which is interesting. You also have right protection tabs right here get that to focus maybe or not yeah they're here yeah we're not gonna be able to see it but right there on both sides so if you record something important you could safety protect it uh, here is a Maxell uh, MC60UR which is the base tape for Maxell. The best results, always make sure tape is usually taut and wound on a supply rail, guard against extremes of humidity, temperature, magnetic sources. Tape and tape has to be clean and clean at all times. Break safety lug, yes, okay. So, they actually look pretty nice. Uh, this was an attempt at Olympus to cash in on the dictation machine market that Philips had been getting into, and it was more successful than the Philips mini cassette. But do not record music onto these. Do not record music onto these. If you want to hear a sample of music from one of these, let's play it. No, it's not in there. No. We'll play it. It's terrible to uh, get in with one finger. Here we go. Yes. So like that, I hope I didn't make anybody's ears bleed. Um, it isn't the best at recording music. It sure is not. Um, the problems that it suffered from, which is why the music sounds terrible, is A, it plays at 15 sixteenths inches per second, which is half the tape speed of a cassette. So it has half the quality in that form or in that instance, and it's also, the tape is half of the thickness, or width, not thickness, well it's actually a lot thinner too, but half the width of a cassette. So I'm going to grab a cassette here and we can do some side-by-side -side comparisons. So for some comparisons here, this is a standard cassette. This is the Alan Parsons Project, Turn of a Friendly Card. Cassette isn't that large to begin with. No, the, the, the tape is the same width. I think the thickness is a lot thinner though. Yeah. So it's not the, it's the same width. It's just um, yeah.
it is about uh, maybe about an inch and a half I'd have to say maybe an inch and a half uh, shorter than a cassette that way uh, it's a lot shorter this way of course uh, it only reaches uh, about halfway through the cassette yeah about halfway so I don't know how big a cassette is the actual size um, specifications but you see like the, the tape path here it only goes to the holes for the capstan the whole cassette does but yeah. So, not only that, it was also an oxide tape, which meant it had poor sound quality. Dolby B was not available for those players. And, um, well, they did make stereo micro cassette players in the 1980s. And uh, search up stereo micro cassette player, or, yeah, pretty much that, and you'll find it. Um, so, this player is fairly nice for dictation at least now take some memos <laughs> uh, you have your counter right there nasty mono speaker uh, model number tape path how it goes see in there got our capstan in the center there there's your playhead You have our inputs and output, uh, headphones, volume control, microphone, input. There's an actual microphone, microphone high or low, how loud you want it to be. Some notes here, you need alkaline batteries. Uh, stereo headphones only, I do not understand since it only records, it only plays in mono, I don't know if it records in stereo. Uh, use the same tape speed, yes, you don't want the chipmunks going on. Uh, High for meetings, lectures in general use, and low for dictation. Uh, on the side here, we have normal or half speed, which, uh, well, usually that's completely distorted. You can't really hear much um, with that. But it does double the tape speed, or double the tape length, not the tape speed. Uh, it's not closed. I don't know. A little bit old, it's very old. Uh, three volt input, normal or fast playback. Uh, I don't know why, but. Uh, and then you have your auto voice record, AVR, which uh, starts the recording when you speak. You have reverse, fast forward, and you could play and fast forward or rewind while you're playing. Uh, so you can, you know, do some cues and scramble around the tape to find what you need. Pause. You have your record. Can't do it because there's not a tape in it. Pause. And then you have your stop and eject button. So, that's it for micro cassettes. Uh, I can't really say any more about them because I don't have a stereo recorder to test that quality. Um, if you like this video, please remember to rate, uh, comment if you want, subscribe to my channel, and enjoy. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.